guys, Shaber 1000 here. It's a little windy. I'll put my wireless mic on later. Show you what we're gonna do, but this is kind of cool first. I want to show you this. Tomatoes. It's February 5th. Uh, and they're still blooming. Pretty cool. Uh, a couple red peppers back there I didn't get in time. The frost got them. Pretty cool. That's what we're going to do. We're going to camp out back here tonight. In the hammock. It wasn't supposed to rain until tomorrow, but now it's calling for rain. I got a couple items here I want to try out. I'm going to try this out. And we're going to talk a little bit about, about this thing here. And or fire starting implements and I'm going to try this out the machete because I'm going to chop some of this stuff out of here now I was going to camp out last night but it was supposed to be real cold and monkey was kind of hinting around she didn't want me uh, out in that kind of cold so I waited till tonight uh, I was going to bring my stove out here and put it like right here or something because I'm going to put this top this tarp I'm going to run a ridge line across there. I'm going to put the tarp down and back there. And I'll kind of block the sides off. I'm going to put a, a chair in there so we can uh, so we can uh, cook our supper tonight. So let me get you on a stand. And we'll go ahead and run a ridge line. I'll show you what I'm using and all that. So hang tight, guys. Okay guys, so we're going like again, sorry about the wind. What we're going to do, let's get this open up. First thing we're going to check out is a machete. Because we need a machete. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. This is this is just a cheap Walmart thing. Um, I think it's like 30 bucks at Walmart. Uh, who is it? Ozark Trail. Again, when you don't have the money to buy good stuff, you know, but there's, we're going to be trying that out and we'll do some talking about emergency fire start, <coughs> starting and stuff like that. Um, get this out of here. always put these things on here it is oiled I don't know if you saw that but it had a little oil see there's, there's some oil um, it's pretty sharp now sometimes steel different steel will not hold up as good as other steel so it has a sheet it has a sheet for the kind of like more knife it has a sheet for the knife for the um, the machete and the uh, little axe there we also got we've got paracord we've got paracord on this handle here and paracord on this handle here we're not going to be using that okay because i'm going to be using something something a little different now you can put put your ferro rod in here but it feels kind of loose so i'm not going to do that here it goes in this one Yes, it's kind of loose. I'm not going to put that in there. I don't want to lose it. Comes with a knife sharpener. Uh, I don't know if that'll go in there. But anyway, a couple carabiners, flashlights. Supposed to come with the batteries. Um, I don't see any, but a uh, knife sharpener can probably go in here. There's where the knife goes. Let's go ahead and put this in the sheath. I was going to wait until we was actually out camping to do this, but, you know, I didn't. So, I figure we're in the backyard. There's a couple perks about that. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, who cares? Who cares where you're at? Don't let somebody tell you, oh, that ain't camping, because it is. Okay. Now, that feels good. All right, so that's nice. Um, let's go ahead and put the sheath on this.
and we're not going to use paracord because I'm just going to use this cheap stuff Dollar Tree a buck yellow blue red and I think black but they were out of black but so I got this one I'm going to cut it because I don't like to cut my paracord uh, unless I really had to then I would but okay so and again you can this is this is kind of weird how it goes like that because your belt's like that right that would mean that this goes like that but if you got that on your belt it's going to be like this I don't like that what the hell it, 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 see it should be it should be long ways like that unless this is to hook on to one of these I don't know but this also has a snap snap here that goes around the handle and it's got a place for a lanyard you can put a lanyard in it which I will do later I'll probably use some of this stuff because the knife has it and the the um, the hatchet has it but now these snaps they're always a pain at first but once you use them a couple times okay yeah I don't know I don't know why that's like that your belt don't run that way your belt runs around that way that doesn't make sense um, that's kind of stupid it's not a big axe just a small little I mean in a pinch and of course it's got your uh, if I'm out in the woods I don't know what I would need those for little wrenches but you never know uh, okay so I'm gonna get you spun around here and we're gonna try the hatchet out okay now I said hatchet didn't I we're gonna try the machete out um, feels kind of I, I like the handle though it's not plastic it's like rubberized I do like that it's comfortable um, I just don't know what kind of steel they used uh, like I said better steel is going to hold an edge longer you know it's not going to dull as quick but hey it's Ozark Trail you know you get what you can afford right so cut some of these lines out of the way here got a big one here whoa that went on all right can't complain about that I'm not hurting the tree guys in fact these vines helping the tree these vines will kill these trees after a while uh, let's see I got one that's dead right over here it looks like it's alive but uh, the vines kind of got it So we're going to move this out of the way. Not too bad. It's not real heavy, which I guess if your backpacking's good, but you've got less weight to, you know. So if you've got your pros and cons, I'm just going to move this one out of the way here. help if I can hit the same spot more than once. Of course, 
They're not real sharp out of the box. Not these cheap ones. Uh, I think, I think with a good sharpening it would help. All right, now, I'm gonna go over here. This one here, I'm going to have to go over here and cut, get it out of the way. I could just wrap around the tree, I'm not sure. Let me get that taken care of. There's no nicks. Stevie nicks. Alright, so, I'm not sure how well this would cut but I'm sure it'd be better than nothing like I always say so I'm gonna go ahead and get those moved out of the way then I'll kick you back on and we'll run a ridge line across here hang tight we'll get that <coughs> excuse me we'll get that done together all right guys so I thought I'd get this out and check it out the batteries are in it and this is adjustable you got um, it's it's a zoom it zooms in and out we'll check this later tonight so that zooms it in and this zooms it out and to cover up the the back uh, the batteries is one of these red things you're supposed to be able to put over that if you need help but they're junk they never work right but And it's got this so that's kind of cool you know so like i said we'll check this out later all right and uh, all right we'll check this out tonight but first let's go ahead and let's run a ridge line up here these are going to come into play a little bit later Okay, I'm gonna bring you over here. All right, let me. I'm gonna shut you off, and I'll turn you back on when I get a better ang angle for you. Okay, guys. So right here's the hammock. All right, I'm just going to go just right, right about where these are, the straps for the hammock, and I'm going to go straight across, and that'll be my ridge line. I don't want to go too high, but I don't want to go too low. Okay, so I will be cutting this. I'm not sure how many feet it is. And I don't know how long it'll last, but it's 40 feet, 12 millimeter, okay? Which is, or 12 meter, whatever. 12 M. <laughs> All right, so let me find the end of this thing. I mean, for a dollar, what the hell? If you lose it or forget it, you don't ever want to lose your cordage, but, you know, if you do, you're out camping, you lose your cordage no big deal you're out a dollar okay so let's go ahead and i'm not going to tie these fancy knots you know i'm not a sailor i don't i don't know a lot of great knots but um i'm just going to tie a slip knot on this one or i think it's called a square knot see it doesn't matter i mean especially survival you're not gonna in survival situation guys you are not gonna be worried about a knot <laughs> pun intended when you're using vines you can't make fancy knots with vines it's it's just near impossible you know so you know it, it's just I just can't, you know what I mean? Okay, so cut that around there. Now I'm going to bring it to the other side and I'm going to go around the opposite side. 
of the tree. This is going to be our ridge line. And I'm going to double it up. The most I can. And double up this ridge line. Now I'm going to bring it around this side of the tree. There we go, there's 40 feet right there. Pretty much. I got more of this stuff. But I think three of them. I'm going to get some more because I really, I really like it for in case you have to cut it. Now I'm going to bring these in like this. Bring it back around. Do this again. And tie that like that. That's not going anywhere. Now, use our knife. Nice. Also, when you cut this stuff, it's just a nylon type thing. When you cut this stuff, you take your lighter. See this in? See that? I didn't do that. That's from the factory. That's what they do. It just runs through a machine that has a fire going. You just melt that over. Try not to burn your cell. And that keeps it from fraying. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Just like that. No biggie. And now I'm going to go down here on the other end here. And grab these two. like this. Alright. Get it as tight as you can. There you go. There's our ridge line. It's a little higher over there than it is here, but it'll be alright. Because if it rains, it'll help shed some rain. Okay? So now, I'm going to get my tarp. This tarp came from one of the tents I had set up out here. Because the tent got ripped, so I saved the bottom part. It was in good good condition, so what I'm going to do... Shoot, I forgot my stakes. I may have to go in and get my stakes. Okay. Let me move this stuff. I'll be back with you when I get ready to throw this tarp on here, okay? Hang tight. Okay, now we're going to put our tarp over. Get it unrolled. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Gonna bring us over here against this tree. Like this. Alright. Now so we're looking about 
about right here and then my way of thinking is I can lower this down if it gets too cold at night. Okay, so I've got some steaks here. How many do I need? I got four of these. So there should be four things on the bottom back there on that side, which I'm gonna stretch it out, put these into the ground. I don't know if my hatchet has a hammer handle on the end of it. It doesn't look like it. Okay, so I don't like that. Can't really can't really hammer with that. It's too it's too thin. So that's alright. So I'm gonna take these around back and I'm gonna step these into the ground. And all all I'm gonna do is just pull that back. And I'm just gonna uh, stretch it out and peg these in. I'll show you when it's all done. It's real self-explanatory. Alright, now I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take one of my poles. Stick it in here. Like this. And this is gonna go like that. It's gonna stick in the ground. I got some guy wires right here that I'm also gonna uh stick it down. Oops, my guy wires will hold this on because the guy wires will go on top of that. So, there you kind of get an idea <coughs> of what I'm going for. Now, I'll probably raise this up a little bit more, but I do want to slant this way so if it does come up with good rain, it'll shed some water instead of making a bowl. So, let me get the guy lines on here and get this tweaked and I'll show you what I did. Okay guys, so here's our here's our little awning or canopy or whatever. I don't have it real high. I don't need it real high. Uh, so I'm going to be sitting down here in a chair right back here cooking and stuff. I'm just going to use my stove. Uh, this is what I did here on the ends. Pegged it down. This is stuck in the ground, pretty solid. I brought this around a little bit and uh, I use this thing here because I can just pull this off and slide this down if I need more of an angle. These things, guys, on these, these are supposed to be long. A lot of people don't realize that, but the reason why they're so long, see there's one over here on the other side too. A lot of people cuts them off, uses them for other things, which is fine if you need it. But what they're for is these are drip lines. That's why I left this kind of long. Because when water, if it rains, water's gonna run down this tree, right? So when it does, and it starts running down here, water will take the path of least resistance. It'll come down here on this and run down there. Now you might get a little bit, but, and I know this works, because I've had these before. Now this one's perfect. It'll run around this yellow stuff, probably even before it gets to that. This one, see, because you don't want it running down your ridge line. So what I could do, if it looks like it's going to rain, what I can do is put another one on there. But for now, what I'm gonna do, just stick that in there like that, okay? Water comes down here, hits that, drips off. That way it's not dripping off here in your lower point. That's what I did in the back. A couple pieces of wood. I don't know if I'm going to have a fire tonight. Probably not. I'm just going to break a couple pieces of, a couple chicken thighs out. I'm going to rake this out a little bit more. And uh, 
move this out of the way I'll just cut that off rake this out real good and I'm gonna put my chair probably right back in here and you can also put your pack or whatever back in there um, and we'll sit there I don't know I may just put my chair right here and put my stove right there I'm not going to use the, the, the wood stove I don't think it's gonna get that hot tonight uh, I'm just gonna use my Coleman gas stove I'm gonna have the lantern out here so if it gets cold I have that silver thing over there that tarp I can box this thing in or come around there maybe depending on which way the winds blowing uh, I can box this in and turn my Coleman lantern on that give me plenty of heat in here and like I said if I have to I can drop this front down make it kind of like a tent <coughs> this is not a winter shelter guys but I'd say it's a 50 55 degree uh, shelter if you got a good bag I got a 50 degree bag because you know we're in Florida that's Fahrenheit we're in Florida so I don't need a sub-zero bag so I should be all right that's why I didn't want it too high in case I did have to try to make some heat in here all right guys so there we're kind of set up now I'm gonna go ahead and move this uh, take this stuff in the house uh, I may yeah we're gonna go ahead and try this striker out down here later on and we're gonna try our light out tonight so <coughs> so there we go there's our little home for the night so if somebody has a tent like this that they lost the poles the tent poles and the stakes and it's not all you know the poles cost more if you can find them than the whole damn tent so don't throw it away i mean if you have to you can actually you know use cut off tree branches and stuff and and hang it but something like this is pretty big tarp i noticed down the bottom there was a hole a little tiny hole or two so i don't i didn't see any up here at the top so we should be good um i've got more of these these poles so if i have to i can put i can put one right here you know i don't see any holes in in this part there might be one right there above my head i don't know but if it starts leaking that's what i'll do I'll just raise this up and then it'll, uh, and I can put a piece of tape over that or something. It's no big deal. Uh, it's not supposed to rain real hard till tomorrow. So, and Sunday before the game, so, but I, I don't keep up on the game anymore, so. All right, guys, so there it is. So, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna start their supper. They're having chicken, so I'm just gonna swipe two pieces of that <laughs> and I'll bring it out and cook it on the stove for you. So I'm going to go get my stove and my little table and I'm going to put a chair in here and I'll be back with you when I get that all done. Okay, guys. This is the fire rod. Uh, you know, fire rod, they say there's better ones than others, but um, what this is is... Uh, if I can get you to focus here This is your flint Right here Now we're going to want to scrape some of that off That coating That protective coating I'm going to use the back of my knife There we go Alright and then I'll be using See This has got serrated See it's serrated there I'm, I'm probably yeah I guess it's not gonna work that way there we go I'll use this right here <sighs> come on that right there that way it's not on the blade I know I used the blade in one of my other videos but that was just an old knife don't worry about it you know what I mean so alright guys so but see it's just a piece of flint is all that is in there so let's get this down in here and I want to talk some more about this here in just a minute as far as survival goes, okay? There it is. Now the uh if you notice the title, the title said semi solo. That's because monkey's gonna come out and visit me after a bit. So she's not home yet. But um 
anyway so there's that let me get you raised up here and let's talk about this survival stuff here for a second okay now it's gonna be getting hot real quick let's get you in here oh okay now my take on it all right survival all these preppers and survivalists and all these guys now i'm not cutting them down before my haters start it's not what i'm doing they have their views their opinions i have my views and my opinion now you can carry this you got a knife right make a spark well or you can carry this survival what are you going to want you know you have nothing survival situation you come across somebody's old packs been there for a while right you really need to use stuff in there all right he's got one of these and one of these you check it it works what are you going to use especially in survival these things you can buy like four for a dollar i would recommend getting the you know like the big pay up for pay up for a good lighter a couple good lighters but i mean this is fun i do it all the time you guys see me i always use one of these a spark um like you'll see guys carry this little kit you know, it's got their char cloth, it's got their flint, it's got their striker for to strike the flint. And you know, them cans are that big around, right? That thick. You gotta make the char cloth. Buy one of these, stick it in your pocket. Man, buy a couple. You know, stick in your pocket, whatever, in your pack. Just use a lighter. Now, like I said, I use this for fun, but have I ever had to resort to my lighter? No. But in a survival situation, if I was lost, I'm going to have both of these, right? I always carry them. If I'm out on the boat, I'm out uh, camping, I've always got a lighter because I smoke. I know it's bad for you. Let's, that's not what this, this video is about. That's not what any of my videos is about. I know what's good for me and what's not. You know, so instead of me, um, got some smoke coming in, uh, you know, going out and loading down on some Dairy Queen ice cream I smoke a cigarette what's worse you know we can argue about this all day but that's not what this is about guys this is about is I always have two of these or you know one of each in a survival situation if I really had to build a fire and I know it's dark dark times coming soon I gather my wood it's getting dark I'm not gonna fuck around with this guys Quite frankly, I'm going to pull out my lighter and I'm going to light that fire. Uh, especially if, if like monkeys with me, you never know when you get in that situation. Now, there's nothing wrong with honing your skills, but I know. Stop, stop right there. But that lighter will eventually go dead. It'll eventually evaporate. Yeah, it sure will, won't it? But once it does, whether it lights or not. I still got a spark what's this a spark and then guys will go you know well I've got a lighter but I want to save that resource and use this or I want to build a bow drill and save it for what in an emergency situation or survival situation think about it guys that's when you need it so what are you saving it for when you get home the guy never had to use my lighter I'm a man there's no shame in using lighter. There's no shame in using lighter to light a fire anytime. I just do this because it's fun. In a survival situation, I guarantee you I am going to have a lighter and I'm going to use it. You know, if I lose my lighter, then I'm going to use this. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have no choice. But like I said, once this runs out, you know, this lighter runs out, I'm still going to have a spark. You know, I mean, it's not out. It's pretty much new, but you can see what I'm saying. When your lighter runs out of fluid, what's it do? It sparks. You have a spark. You have an ignition system, you know. It may take you a little longer to, but, you know, let's use our brains, guys. Let's, let's quit teaching these folks that you have to use this and save this. Save it for what? You're lost in the middle of nowhere, you know. You were lucky. You caught some fish earlier. Now you're lost on your way back to base camp. Rain's coming in. 
Well, you threw up a quick shelter, but you're going to need a fire. You want to cook that fish? Save that. Use this. Why carry two, as a matter of fact? I just happen to because I car camp. You can carry anything you want. But if I was backpacking, this would be the only thing I would carry, and this is what I would start my fire with. I mean, you want to carry a whole bunch of accessories, a bow drill? Yeah, it, it fits in this little container. It's this big. and Come on, guys. Don't teach them guys that. For real. In a survey, carry one of these, whether you smoke or not. Get used to sticking it in your pocket. You stick your wallet in your pocket. Have this sitting right there beside it. Stick this. It weighs nothing. You don't even know it's there after a while. Have one in your glove box or your car. Both cars. Have one in, in your boat, in your tackle box. They're cheap. You know, and oh, you lost your lighter. Yeah, well, you know, I boated here. I've got accessories in my boat. So I'm going to have one in my boat. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to have one in my pocket. I'm going to have one in my tackle box. I'm going to have one in my boat. There's three right there. One of them's going to work. I'm probably going to have one of these too, just because they're fun. Now, I'm not, you know, when it comes to survival, when I see a couple things laying there, you can have one of them to start your fire with. I'm picking a fucking lighter, man. You know, work, work smarter, not harder, you know. But anyway, it's not really a rant. It's just, I, I hate when people do that and say, you know, always carry one of these. Why? I mean, in fact, this weighs more than a damn lighter, you know? And it's a little longer. And the handle is every bit as thick. Survival? Get you a lighter. Alright, now, I've got my, my stove here. I've got it filled up. i got my lantern. We are going to have the headband lamp out here tonight. So I'll probably hang it up here or something. I don't think we'll have to close this in. We'll just see. Uh, if we do, it's no big deal. We'll just close it in. Uh, if it starts getting cold, I'll close it in ahead of time. But I got plenty of light. Um, like I said, if, if it gets cold, I don't think I'm going to have to bring my stove in. I hope not because I didn't cut up any wood I was going to. And I was thinking about setting it here or over there. Probably over there it's more level. And... Uh, and you know let some of that heat come in but i don't think i'm gonna have to guys i think with this lantern um and my and my gas stove my coleman stove there i think i think it would really heat this up just fine um and it'd be safer really but i don't think we're gonna have to so anyway, got anyway guys i am also cooking their their supper too so uh i'm gonna go in and check it out i think it's ready to be put in the oven um, like I said, um, we're going to have chicken out here. We're going to have two pieces of chicken, and I'll put the rest in the oven for them, but we'll cook ours out here. Now, it's, it's already boiled. I usually boil it. When I put it in the oven, I boil it first. That way, I got some broth, you know, in case I'm going to make noodles or something. Um, so, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have noodles with my chicken, and instead of water, I'm going to use the broth to make our noodles so I can have chicken noodles, chicken noodle soup kind of. Okay, so stay tuned for that, and I'll be back with you. I've got some smoke going on in here now. I'll be back with you guys in just a second. Okay, guys, got my stove here. Let's get this set up. I did put a wall up over there. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I had some smoke coming in from that fire. So, put my phone over there. Let's go ahead and get this set up. We're going to cook a, we're going to fry up some chicken. Come on. And, uh, <coughs> monkey's home, so I got them fed. There we go. All right. Now, I filled this up, so I'm going to go ahead and pump this up. You got to pump it like 50 times. So, I can't see the screen, so I don't know what you guys are looking at. Hopefully, it's all right. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this pumped up, and I'll be right back with you, and we'll start it up. Okay, now, I got it pumped up. It only took like 30 times, because, like I said, I just filled it up. Um, so, we're going to light this up. And, uh, let's see. Turn this up for a second. Uh, 
All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to always turn this one on. Also, just for a minute, just make sure all the air is out. You don't have to. Okay, so and put this down. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a couple pieces of chicken here. I'm going to fry in the cast iron skillet. But first, I've got I've got these noodles here. All right, just these things. They cost a buck. Pretty big bowl, super bowl. Now what I'm going to do is I also have, like I said, my chicken is pre-boiled, and I've saved some of the chicken broth. I'm going to use the chicken broth to put in my soup. Okay, so instead of just water so we're going to go ahead and heat this up first now I can turn this one off and while this is cooking we can chat for a minute but uh so yeah now that's blue you turn this back down this knob or this lever here Okay, so bring you up here. Let's, let me see something here, real quick. Yeah, not too bad. I got my light, my headband light hanging up over here. So I'll tell you what I can do. Also, this strap. Oh, I shut this light off. Hang on a second here. Got plenty of lights. The strap has one of these, so you can take the band off and wrap it around something. So, let's see here. Okay. Little ambiance here. I'll kick the big one back on here in a minute. Put this around here. Hang on. There we go. I think I turned you in then my head. Okay, so now guys. Just gonna bring that up to a boil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump it in to my soup and I'll let that set. And while that's setting, I will go ahead and uh, fry up my, my chicken. Uh, like I said, I when I fry it, I usually pre-boil it. And I baked theirs, I baked theirs in the oven. I'm gonna fry mine. So, anyway, they're in there eating. Uh, what I wanna talk to you about is, ooh, that's gonna be hot and I didn't bring anything. Okay, <laughs> I'll have to get something here in a minute, get that off of there. But, is camping out in your backyard. You know, here's the thing, guys. Don't feel like it's cheating. I've heard, I've actually heard YouTubers, and if I could remember their names, I, I sure would, would say them, because I don't think it's right what they said, but what they said was, if you're camping in your backyard, that's not camping, okay, and one of these guys has a pickup truck with a tent that's up on top. Summertime, he has an air conditioning, one of those portable air conditioners you set down below and he's got a tube running into it. He's got a big ass buddy heater. On his tailgate, that's where he cooks his food, on a gas grill. <coughs> and he's talking about if you're in your backyard camping, that's not camping, that's cheating. Now if anybody's cheating, it's him, you know, and I'm sorry. But, no, I'm not sorry. Um, I think it's bullshit that people think if you're in your backyard, you're not camping. Bullshit. You are camping. Um, look at them guys in them quarter million dollar, you know, motor homes and, you know, the $20,000 pop-up camp. That's camping. How do you look at it? I mean, you know, you, you pull into a place, you plug in, you got electric and shit just like we do out here now I haven't run any electric out here for anything I'm on battery power but if you do who cares some places you may get electric when you get your campsite and you're tenting so you use electric there's no shame in that if it's there use it 
there's a lot of people that that can't get out it's starting to boil that they, they can't get out far or don't have a place to go but they got a little backyard pitch a tent back there man there's no shame in that this is where I'm at I'm in my backyard the house is over here about 20 yards who cares you know so if they tell you that's cheating don't believe them now there's a guy called Simon a bloke in the woods okay check his channel out it's pretty good right now they're in lockdown or whatever over where he's at and I don't know if he's in Australia or what but they're in lockdown so he can't go out to his normal places that he goes out in the woods so he's been setting up a tent and he's got this uh, cooking tent that he sets up and cooks he's been doing it in his backyard cool I don't see a problem with that at all and he tells you as you've seen I'm in my backyard and he explains why but there's nothing wrong with that I got places around here I can go camp but you know to pack everything out and in and just for one night or I'd rather just do it right here you know I can't do the things I used to be able to do so I'll do it right here uh, just for an overnighter yeah I'll do this but I'm not going to carry all this stuff out into the woods and uh, set it all up and tear it all down next morning just for a couple hours here if I don't get it tore down tomorrow that's fine it's my backyard um, you know it can stay out for a day or two you know but because that really bothers me you know because people think I'd love to go camping I've actually talked to real people I'd love to go camping but I don't have a camper go buy you a $50 tent I do feel some rain now uh, go buy you a $50 tent you know uh, go camping I don't really have a place to go you, got a backyard don't you yeah go in your backyard well that's not really camping yeah yeah it is it's camping it's camping especially if your kids have never been camping before and they're getting that age to where you want to try to take them out you know five six years old or whatever but my kids they've always camped since they was babies uh, my youngest one bear she's you know we had her out when she was a baby camping but you know not in the winter time but I have had her camping in the winter time when she got a little older but um, you know if you're not sure how they're gonna react that's the best place to try it out in your backyard you know see if they get scared see if they like the tent stuff like that yeah so I do feel a little rain but yeah so this is uh start heat up pretty good that's just a nose art trail uh, coffee percolator there I don't know what she gave for it. 10 bucks 15 bucks 10 or 15 bucks wasn't very much but it works you know it works you don't need thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment you don't need a big ass Toyota four-wheel drive that you know with a big tent on top of it and all this stuff that you can get back through the mud and go now this is real camping this ain't cheating I ain't camping at home but yeah you got a buddy heater for if it gets cold you got an air conditioner when it's I mean there was one time in fact the last one I seen he, he was complaining about he couldn't bring his air conditioner and it might get hot come on man are you serious you know whatever I mean, if that suits him, that's fine, but don't cut down people that camp in their backyard because really, what are you doing? It's not much different from a house or a regular camper. You've got air conditioning, you've got heat, you know, he's got power inverters, so he runs electric, which there's no shame in that, but don't put down people that do it in their backyard just because you're out in the woods. You know, you're doing the same damn thing. Even worse, because, you know, I'm out here. I have no heat. I have no air conditioner. It got hot today. So... I need to get a rag so I can get this pot off of here and I'll be right back with you guys. Stick around, man. There's more. Okay, so this is boiling, guys. <clears throat> I just went and got me a pair of gloves here. Had them sitting right over here from when I was doing the fire. Ok, 
Okay, boiling nicely. I'm just going to set this down for a minute. Okay. But as you know, I don't drink coffee, so I won't be needing it for that. And so, let's get... Get our skillet up here and get it hot. I did bring out some oil and a fork and a plate, just a plastic plate from the dollar store. Okay. Now, should have brought a napkin. This is what I did with my chicken. I put it in a baggie with a little bit of flour. And some seasoning, that way I didn't have to bring a whole bunch of stuff out. Now, got me a little bottle of oil here. heat up my stew not real level all right that should help so I'm gonna let that get hot it's already starting to warm up a little bit I just got two pieces of chicken so uh, yeah nice I did bring my lantern out it's hanging up over there so if I need to you know I can put it in here I can block this side off if I have to I just like I said I just blocked that side off because I had that smoke coming in here now I never turn that lantern on and leave it there up against that plastic but if I need to heat right now it's pretty warm out here I don't know what the temperature is but I can check for you let's see what the temperature is Get oil on my hands now uh, monkey's going to be coming out after she eats and talks to her mom. She'll come out and it's 68 degrees right now. February 5th. Um, yeah, we had a freeze warning and everything, but hell, it, it was nice out last night. I could have camped out last night, but uh, don't forget we're going to check this light out. I, I used it to go get my gloves. They were sitting right over here by the fire pit. And I'm going to tell you what, this thing is freaking awesome. I like it, so. I think that's a high. That's a low. And then you got your strobe if you need to get someone's attention. So. We'll start it out on low when we check it out we'll do that after we eat so but yeah it's just um, don't let don't let anybody tell you anything like that guys it's just you know they're the ones that's got thousands and thousands of dollars to play with and you know this guy was young still living at home because he's talking about mom and dad you know doing something and he wanted to get out of the house and all this and He's from down here in Florida. He goes to places where we're going to go. Hopefully, not this summer, but at the end of the year. Probably like October or something. September. Maybe even August, but August it gets pretty hot. So, I'm going to take this. Yeah, I should have let it warm, warm up a little bit more. That should be all right. Somebody's out front. Okay, so I did bring, I did bring my tongs out. Put it over here where the oil is. Let's see who's, see who's at the door. We're out front. 
Probably monkey taking Bruno out. Let's see, it'll give me a snapshot here. No, I don't see anybody. Huh. So it gives me a snapshot. I don't see anybody out there. Probably somebody walking past. Oh, don't see anyone. It's the front yard there. All right. I'll just set my phone over here. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just, um, just have fun, guys. It don't matter. It's like, here's the thing, guys. Um, I should have made that fit a little bit better. Or, there we go. That's more level. Um, you know, people's all uptight and everything, getting antsy. They want to get out and do things and... Here, that's cooking. They want to get out and do things, and, and I understand it. I do, too. But we all need to do our part. Not just keep ourselves safe, but to keep everyone around us safe. Total strangers. But here's the thing. People complain because they got to spend a couple weeks in the house or whatever. Um, my take on that is, what do you think about our troops? You know, in a muddy-ass foxhole for weeks at a time. Nobody to talk to, no TV, no internet. And bullets flying over top of their head any time, they can get... Boom. Their head can get fucking blown off. And we're complaining because we have to stay in an air-conditioned house, a heated house, a dry house. All the food we want. TV, internet, cell phone. And... The true heroes, the nurses and doctors, the true heroes, right? Now, I'm not saying they're not doing their part and they're not doing their job. I praise them for that. But what about the people behind the scene, the true heroes? Let's start with Monkey. She's a CNA, you know? She's got to clean up shit. She's got to give baths to the people. She's got to travel. Like today, she was an hour and a half away from home. That's one way. So there's three hours of driving right there just to go help this person that can't help themselves. What about people like that? Let's go to people like me. How about the mechanic that keeps the doctors and nurses' cars on the road so they can go help people? What about them guys? We don't get no recognition. All you hear is the doctors and nurses. At first I thought, wow, that's pretty nice. Now I'm getting tired of hearing it because that's all you hear. Is how they're saving lives. Now, Monkey, she, <coughs> she has to have her CPR license. She has, she's got several different kinds of licenses and certificates and stuff that she has to have just to go give somebody a, a bath, you know. She had a patient one time that just ended up dying a couple weeks later, but just went out on her, you know. And she's one hand, you know, trying to help this woman, which was a bigger woman, trying to help her and calling 911, trying to tell them how to get to the place. Because for some reason they couldn't get GPS right. It took them 20. F I, I timed it because I, I was with her, but I was outside in the truck. Took, a, took over 25 minutes to get there, and Monkey's doing the best she can. And, um,. Uh, you know, well, she, she saved her that night, but the woman ended up dying. She would have passed away anyhow. But the point is, is you got to deal with stuff like that. You know? They have to deal with things like that. And, and there's no, you never, and if you have, send me a clip or a link to where they're praising the CNAs, where they're praising the mechanics, the tire guys, the oil change people. You know, we keep them doctor's cars going because, you know, that doctor ain't out there changing his own tires. 
he's not out there tuning up his car, changing his oil. Maybe he does change his oil on his 1956 uh, Rolls Royce Shadow or whatever. You know, I mean, but to actually keep their stuff going. The nurse, you know, the nurses. You know, who keeps their vehicles going? Guys like me. And it really kind of hurts me, you know, and it hurts Monkey, too, to see how these nurses are getting, they're the unsung heroes. What about Monkey, you know? And what about Monkey? And there for a while, the nurses wasn't even going to people's homes. The doctors wasn't going to. You know. Monkey did. Monkey was at working every day. Taking a chance of getting sick herself. So somebody don't go around stinking. Yeah. You know? What about the guy who's taking a chance of getting sick? Just so that doctor can go to the patient, go to the hospital and help people. You know? Come on, let's give credit where credit's due. You don't don't just do a couple different people. Let's do them all. There's CNAs in the hospitals. What about the CNAs at the nursing homes? You know? The receptionists. They got all they gotta deal with people that come in. I have the virus. They have to deal with that. They have to take their blood pressure. They do their vitals. They got a chance of getting sick. This praise everyone. Not just the doctors and not just the nurses. It's ridiculous, you know? It's ridiculous. But monkey's just like one step away from being a nurse. She could have her nurse's, nurse's license with no problem. Just take the test is all she'd have to do. She don't want that. You know? She likes what she's doing, helping people, you know? And I don't blame her. You know? Oh, this is looking pretty good, guys. I did turn it down a little bit. I'm just, really what I'm doing is browning it up because it's pretty much cooked through. I didn't cook, I didn't cook these all the way through. Because like I said, I was going to put, I put theirs in the oven. These two I saved out. So, and I knew I was going to fry them up so I didn't cook them clear through. But here's what we're looking at here. Just like that. So what I'm going to do now. I'm going to open up my soup bowl here. Um, these these things a lot of people like them. I don't I don't like that stuff, man. It just there's no flavor to them, and they never cook up. By the time these get like the little corn and stuff in there, by the time they get cooked, your noodles are overcooked. So I am going to put whoa. I am going to put my seasoning in. Should have brought out the trash bag. Put my seasoning in here. It's good stuff for a buck, man. They got different kinds. They got beef and uh, shrimp. And... So I think this cooled down a little bit more, or more than what I wanted. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to bring this back up to a boil. It may not have been a full boil, but it sure looked like it. I'm going to start this up. Lighter out here. I'm gonna heat this up some more because it's gonna be another minute or two. There we go. I can't turn. I can't turn this down. Well. Here's what we can do. Here, we'll turn. I can turn this one down. Whoops. Well, that figure's doing it. I can turn this one down and leave that one up so I can get my water to boil. Because I don't want these to dry out. Now, 
Put this back on here. There we go. So yeah, guys, just uh, you know, thank the people. Cashiers, you know, at the uh, at the gas station, the supermarket. You know what I mean? What about them people? They do. They don't know who's got the virus. They don't. They don't know any. You know, they don't know. And people complain. I don't want to wear a mask for the 20 minutes that you're going to be in there. Even sometimes maybe 5 or 10 minutes. I don't want to wear a mask that long. What about the workers there that have to wear them masks 8 hours a day to keep you safe, you know? Oh, and then let's complain. Everybody, let's just do what we got to do and get over this. We would have been over this a long time ago if people just do what they need to do. Look at that gravy. Wow. That's pretty good gravy there. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and let this cook up. And, uh, get ready to eat. Once this is ready to put in the soup, I'll put it in the soup. Oh, it's boiling. Okay, let's go ahead and... this over here shut this off we'll turn this down a little bit now we're gonna put I'll turn you over this way But I'm not going. I always just fill mine just a little bit below the line, a quarter inch below the line is what I fill mine at. I'm going to set this down here. Let this sit for about four minutes. Drop my fork. Got some owls hooting, so <coughs> my chicken's almost done. By the time my noodles are done, my chicken will be done. And after I eat. Oh yeah. After I eat, we'll uh, we'll try out the flesh. Jesus Christ, you scared the shit out of me. Yeah. After I eat, we'll try out the flesh. How are you getting in here? Right through here. Yeah. I put that up because I I had a bunch of smoke from that fire earlier. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's monkey. Oh, well, you probably need it if it rains. Hello. <laughs> yeah, there's monkey. I will give her my chair if she wants it. All right, guys, I'll be back with you and we'll check out the flashlight. Okay, guys, I'm back. Monkey came out, sat with me for a little bit. Now we're gonna try out my light. Here, let me turn this one on first. Um, all right. Now we're gonna try this light out. Shit, I should have brought the stand, but. There's high, there's low, and of course we got, in case you gotta do that to somebody's eyes to save yourself, but, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, see how big it's getting? All right, let's go back in here Now, I'll put you on the stand here. Okay. We'll point it that way towards the house. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make it bigger. Now, look how big the beam is. That is so cool. Uh, let me shut this light out up here. Okay. 
but there's there's how big the beam is there's the truck out there there so that's pretty cool oh it's even getting bigger here we go now let's go out back here yeah that's that's awesome see not bad for a light that came in a $30 kit with the batteries so yeah there's our fire we started earlier see and once again sign up here in the trees focus there we go it's amazing i like it awesome let's go back in the shelter okay now i had my hammock i took my hammock down just for a minute because um <clears throat> i let monkey use the chair and i was sitting down here i was sitting down there so i'm gonna hang my hammock back up well it's actually her hammock that's why i use these whoops sorry these things there we go yeah and then I got my little pouch here and put my phone in I may do some reading a little bit later so let me get you set up over here whoops all right yeah huh. pretty cool little flashlight there I think so put my flashlight down here I brought out a couple NA beers there we go now let's get up here in the hammock I'll move you guys to that light it's not shining in your face. There we go. I did raise it up a little bit for me, but I'll have to put it back down for monkey. Take my knife off. Might as well get my phone now. Boom. And I just felt my pop. That's all right. Okay. <coughs> Put my phone in my little pocket there on the hammock. Whoops. There we go. Something ain't right. I got it twisted or something. But, all right. So there we go. <coughs> so I'll have to untwist it. It got twisted. See, it's. I do have my sleeping bag out here in case I need it. Yeah, this thing don't feel right. Something happened. It's all twisted. Uh, it's kind of like. I'll show you. See? It shouldn't be like that. Um, wasn't like that before. But. I'll fix it and when I get ready to go to sleep I mean all in all it's comfortable if I can figure out why it did that must have just got twisted I don't know this side's pretty good this end I mean but 
<coughs> so all in all that $30 kit right now the only light I'm using is my headlamp light I just got it stuck up in there in our ridge line uh, but that $30 machete and I mean granted guys yeah it's cheap it ain't gonna last forever with a knife break I don't know probably but you know sorry guys um, thing about it is uh, a lot of people can't afford that stuff you know we can't afford I can't afford to buy a 30 40 dollar knife I just can't afford to do it you know um, and I'm not going to even if I had the money I doubt if I would do it uh, you take care of it like this knife batoning I'm not going to baton with this knife guys if I do any batoning I'll use my machete you know um, unless it's little little stuff but that's where a lot of guys break their knives I've seen a lot of youtubers have these oh I gave 40 50 bucks for this knife next thing you know it's broke or next time they make a video for some reason they got another knife and don't talk about it but you know you get what you can afford uh, hell when I was started when I started camping I just had an old Barlow pocket knife I started camping at like 12 years old I just had an old Barlow pocket knife that my dad gave me and you know I made it work I used it as a hatchet I used it for batoning I used that thing for everything man um, yeah just you know if you have to just start out buying you cheap knives you know and keep them sharpened because they, they won't hold an edge I know cheaper knives won't hold an edge and I don't know about this one yet because I just opened it tonight but that was my one of my Christmas presents that they got me and that kit because I've been wanting it because I you know I didn't want to pay $30 for a knife $30 for a machete $15 20 for a cheap hatchet you know I mean before you know you buy all that stuff you got over 100 bucks in it if you can buy a kit if that's what you can afford buy it you can probably get them cheaper online you know that was just at Walmart it was Ark Trail it'll work it'll get you by guys you don't have to be you know it's like here lately there's you know everybody's doing the winter storms winter storm camping well I can't do that because it's it doesn't snow here but everybody's doing them winter storm campings and and, and they're trying out these hot tents and and they got the stove and I looked them hot tents up man six seven hundred dollars I can't afford it can you I mean maybe some of you guys can but I can't you know to get a stove and everything and 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 what they fail to tell you some of them will tell you but a lot of them won't that that, that they're given to them you know the company just sends it to them because they're such a big youtuber and they get the shit for free why not do some videos like this you know I got $15 in this damn setup here you know this was an old tent you know the top was an old tent this was 15 bucks I think or 10 10 or 15 bucks for the hammock that's all I got I mean so you know snap into reality I mean and, and as far as I'm concerned them them damn tents they're no better than the cheaper tent you know I mean if you want a hot tent I mean you can make a hot tent pretty much you get you some canvas and stuff you can make a hot tent you know you can make a shelter and put a little stove in it build a stove like I did didn't cost me anything but you know the time to do it you know but I can weld I understand that I got the cutters to cut the stuff but I mean ask your friends they'll help you build one you know and just uh and let's snap into reality because nine times out of ten you go to a campground where they're tenting and you look at some of their equipment ozark trail coleman you know uh yeah yeah i mean their their, their truck is a forty fifty thousand dollar truck but they're they're using coleman stuff i mean you know igloo coolers and stuff like that i mean who, who can afford to go out and buy that expensive cooler what the hell is it called you guys know what i'm talking about man i mean you know six seven hundred dollars for a fucking cooler to keep your drinks cold shit i'd buy ice for a year and still not have that much in it you know i mean it's it's just crazy 
to use a few times a year some people can only get out to go camping once a year you know and that's the way I was a few years ago you know I was just working I was working all the time now I got time to camp but you know I do these solo things in the backyard or in that one on the boat but you know I mean it's not fair to monkey to have to go to work all day long while well, I'm just out having a good time boating around fishing and all this you know so I try to wait when she's off to do the camping you know and again you know what's what is our tent an Ozark trail tent I think we paid up for that one I think it was 50 or 60 bucks but damn I mean seven eight hundred dollars for a tent that you're only going to use during the cold season because you ain't going to get in that hot tent even without the stove on it's going to be hot inside that tent it gets hot in the nylon tents come on guys i mean let's get into reality here and and stop jerking people's chains and yeah go to the, the, the link to the website will be it yeah and 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 they look at it they're making minimum wage and, and they're going yeah how am i supposed to afford that you know I don't like that. That's why I like showing you, just like that one video I did a year or two ago, me and Monkey. We just stretched a rope from one tree to another here in the backyard and, you know, hung a tarp over it. We made a tent. You know, have fun on a budget. You know? Because if my tent keeps me dry when it's raining, I'm good with that. I don't care if it's a thousand dollar tent. Or a $20 tent. If it keeps me dry, I'm good with that, you know. Just the way it is. Like I said, down here in Florida, I don't need a hot tent. You know, and I'm not going to go buy one just to just to have it and go, I got a hot tent. Because there are some days when you could use a hot tent down here. But, hell, I mean, damn. If that's the case, you know, I'd just give me a little buddy heater. I, you know, up north, like I said, you you know unless you're in canada way up north in canada i mean you know ohio michigan you're only going to use that tent how often you know but it'll last forever well so will a nylon tent if, if you're only going to use it once or twice a year but like i said if you don't get out every weekend in the winter time i can't see paying up that kind of money for a tent and a stove and those new stoves have you seen them you open the door the the stack is right at the freaking door I'd love to have one of them and review it because that's stupid. So, and yeah, you can cook on it too. Yeah, but you're reaching around that hot stove pipe. That, by the way, that just rolls out. It's just a little flimsy piece of metal that rolls out and just got a couple pieces of wire holding it from unrolling. And, and it gets red hot and you're trying to reach around there to cook. And think about it. When you open that door, it's not going past the 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 air flow is not going past the wood and up and out they're saying oh it's it's real uh um cheap to run i mean it doesn't use a lot of wood well well no but it i mean i can't see as soon as you open the door the draft comes in and up and that's it so if you're burning a little bit of green wood or some damp wood because it rained a lot before you went camping or star raining your stuff got wet and you put it in there sometimes you need that air to go past the wood past the coals to kind of boost it up to get that wood dry so you can burn it it, it just doesn't make sense to me to have a stove to where the stack is right where you open the door and you got to reach around that stack to cook that's freaking dangerous, especially that flimsy ass metal. Jeez. That flimsy ass stupid metal for the damn, for the stack. That just doesn't make sense to me. That's stupid. It's dangerous. And, I mean, and you're paying, you know, any, anywhere from, I looked them up, anywhere from $400 to $700. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm rambling. So, I'm going to fix this this uh this hammock so i can get more comfortable and i'll kick you guys back on in a minute i might do some reading on my phone since i you know huh, i'm in the backyard i got service maybe watch some youtube videos camping videos and um but another one um fun um it's called fun in the woods that's another good channel with dave pearson 
he's awesome. Um, him and his son go out a lot. Uh, his son's name's Nick. Uh, this guy's really cool. He's in Georgia. He does some cool stuff. He don't get to get out a lot and do overnighters, but he will get out and show you tips and tricks and you know stuff like that. Um, now he has a lot of expensive stuff, but uh, a lot of the stuff he he makes like he he engineers his own like hanging grills and stuff and he uses uh, uh stainless steel welding rods and he welds that stuff together and and he's not ashamed to tell you <coughs> like he'll tell you how oh, this pot here i got you know i can't tell you where to get one because i got this one at a thrift store you know and uh you know for three or four bucks he'll he'll tell you you know and he repurposes things like that and, and he's really cool and if you comment he'll comment back to you and he gets a lot of comments but he he does make sure he gets back to everybody this is very very cool outdoors mcgee he's something that guy there love that guy yeah I was, we was watching him last night he was doing a, a storm a winter storm and uh in his stealth shelter it's gonna be the last time he's there and it was leaking and stuff but uh yeah he's he's really fun to watch too he's he's really cool uh there's a couple out there you know that just that are just like us you know he's another one that don't go out and buy expensive stuff he'll tell you i can't afford it he'll, he'll be straight up i cannot afford it you know this stuff's not given to me you know But you got people that give them stuff all the time. It's expensive stuff that, honestly, they wouldn't go out and buy. They wouldn't do it. They're just, you know, reviewing it because they're like, oh, here's here's free stuff. And, you know, I mean, it was like one time I got something. They wanted me to test something out for them. And I could keep it and use it. But if they wanted it back, I had to give it back to them. It wasn't really mine to keep, you know. It's like... what what the hell am i making them no no we're not you know we're not gonna pay you we're gonna pay you by giving you this stuff but if we want that stuff back and a couple of the things they said you can use and do a review on it but once you do your review and see how you like it we want you to send that product back with how you like it and they wasn't even gonna pay the shipping back i said no i ain't I ain't, this was a couple years ago. I ain't doing that. Are you, are you crazy? If you give me something, I'm going to keep it, you know? Somebody give me something. If I give somebody something, I expect them to keep it. It's there. Or sell it or give it away. If you get something from me, it's yours to do with as you wish. You know, throw it away. I don't care. It's yours now. I'm not going to ask for it back. Say, oh, dude, if I build something, which I've got a couple ideas of things I want to build and send to people, I don't want it back. I just want to... I want to you know i want them to give me a, a fair review you know an honest review not and a lot of them and also one of them guys i think one was a knife that they said it has to be a good review and i'm like well then it's not a review if i don't like it i'm going to tell them because I, I was emailing back and forth with them they're like no if we give you this knife to use and to do a review on it's got to be a good review. Well, if I don't like something, I'm going to tell you, I don't like this. You know, it's like the $30 stuff. I'm, I'm satisfied with it, except for the hatchet, the, the sheath and the hatchet. They got the damn thing wrong. And I, you know, it was our trail. Come on, get it together. You can't have your hatchet on your side this way. It's got to be straight up and down, you know? I mean, that sucks now i haven't had to use i haven't used the hatchet yet but i've used the knife so far knife's okay the uh the machete's okay um i won't say it's awesome um but when they give you a sharpening stone that tells you right there that you know you're gonna have to sharpen this thing because it's not gonna hold an edge but that's okay because i got the stone i have no problem with sharpening stuff you know like I've said before, I'll say it again, I'll say it a hundred more times. Um, a, a dull knife, a dull machete is better than no knife or machete because you can always find a rock to sharpen it on. If you can find a rock to dull the damn thing, use that rock to sharpen it back up. All right, I'm going to try to fix this hammock. I don't know what's going on with it, but I'm going to try to fix the hammock and I'll, I'll get back with you guys before it's uh, bedtime.
So guys, I was just sitting here watching some YouTube and BAM! Guess who popped up? Ben uploaded a freaking video. Hell yeah, brother. <coughs> ben, it's good to see you back on the damn screen, man. But, like I said before, man, Monkey and I, you know, we'll support whatever your decisions are. But it was great to see you back, I'm not gonna lie. Awesome, man. So, you know, you guys check him out, man. BXX32, he's freaking awesome. Ben, good to see you back. Even if that's that's all you upload for a while, man, we understand and we support your decision. Uh, man, just stay safe, buddy. So, <laughs> just wanted to let everyone know that, that he's got one up. Please go check him out. Um, awesome. Uh, I still got everything the way it was, so, you know, just great to see him. You know, great friend good guy so Ben thanks for sharing that with us man appreciate it I'll be back with you guys in a minute okay guys I don't know if you can hear that but it's raining perfectly dry inside here the only thing is this hammock I'm probably not gonna be sleeping in it tonight I've tried it both ways and it just, it's okay to lay in for a little bit, but man, once I, it's impossible to put a sleeping bag in here. Because down here at the bottom, your feet keep slipping off. Um, I'll mess around and roll out of this thing. This ain't a sleeping hammock, that's for sure. It's only 15 bucks, but I mean, I can't, like my foot right now keeps slipping off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my sleeping bag down here and I've tried to lay it both ways too and it doesn't make a difference so I'm going to hang the hammock up and I'll put my sleeping bag down here on the on the floor because this this just I can't there's just I can't do anything there's you know I mean like right right now my left foot is slipping out I'm not even in my sleep bag you can't I <clears throat> yep see my feet won't even stay in um, so I'm just gonna lay my bed roll out here on the floor and lay back here in this bottom part and I think it'll be all right I don't think I'm gonna get wet uh, so that's what I'm gonna do now okay guys so as you can see I'm down here on the floor I just couldn't that thing just ain't I don't know it sucks it really sucks uh, like I said it's alright to lay down in take a little break but if you're gonna try to nap in it or sleep in it that is probably not the hammock for you especially for camping I don't know what the temperature is I don't actually need my sleeping bag right now. Um, Six o'clock in the morning, I think it's supposed to be 53. But I'll, I'll need it a little bit later because right now it's only nine o'clock. It's only, see, I was watching Ben. <laughs> right now it is only nine, it's 917. Still 63 degrees with rain. Uh, let's click on that. Let's check it out here. Um, we got 90% rain at 9 o'clock. Of course it's raining. 70% at 10 o'clock. 60% at 11 o'clock. At midnight, 50%. At 1 a.m., 40%. And then no more rain until... Well, it goes on up to... So it's supposed to get down to 55 tonight. See, at 6 o'clock, it's going to be 55. So... This sleeping bag is rated at a 50. It's a 50 degree sleeping bag, so I think I'll be fine. Um, I did go in the house and get an extra battery for my camera. Um, and also got this for my phone. But I did forget my damn pillow. And Monkey's got a couple of them homemade pillows, but they're outside and they're soaking wet now. Uh, so I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos and do some reading. I got a pop here. Ah. 
Yeah. All right. Um. So, like right now, I'm pretty damn warm. I may have to go get me a pillow. As long as Mr. Snake doesn't want to come in out of the rain and come in here, I'll be good now. I hope I'm not shooting myself in the foot by saying this, but, you know, I, I started camping at like 12 years old. Maybe even younger, but I know 12 years old, I remember my first actual camping trip out in the wild. I was 12 years old, and... Um, so I've been camping ever since, and I've never, you know, in a shelter like this, I've never had a snake come in on me. I None of my friends have ever had that happen to them. But, you know, I'm down here in Florida. I know we got we got the rattlesnakes and stuff. Hopefully one of them don't come in here. I thought I'd seen a drip. But... Nope. So, I mean, if it does, it does. What do you do, right? <laughs> never been in that situation so hopefully I'll be alright I don't have to worry about bears um, there may be uh, a couple of um, armadillos but usually when it's raining they stay in may see a couple armadillos but they don't bother me I am seeing a drip I think and I'll have to I'll have to find that it could just be yeah, I see a couple of drips here. So I'll have to find that drip before it starts raining too. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a drip. Let me find out where they're coming from. Okay, guys, found my leak. It's leaking at the seam right here. Can you see that? <laughs> That's because I should have turned this the other way. Uh, this part should have been down so I kind of put it in upside down it is too late to change it now and see it's running down here uh, it's leaking on this seam too so it's going to get everything wet if I sleep down in here so that sucks but I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to go get me another tarp and I'm going to put it on top of here. So, hopefully, that'll take care of that issue. And I'll just lay it over top of this and then down in the back and I think it'll be alright. Yeah, we should be okay. I'll be back. i got to go out there. Okay, guys. Still don't have my pillow. I think I got the leak fixed. There were several of them, as you can see. I couldn't find another tarp, so what I did was ran this down the seams. Get old Vaseline, ran it right down the seams. I think it's fine. I've been laying here for about 10 minutes. If you can hear, it's still raining. So, and nothing has come in yet. Got my chair right there. I lowered the front down a little bit so it's got more of a runoff. So it's got more running, it's got some running that way and this way. So it takes a load off of this. Uh, I don't see anything yet, but I'll let you know. I think I'm gonna watch a video or do some reading. And I'll let you know if it starts leaking again. But that Vaseline works good on tents for uh, like the seams and stuff. And if you have little pinholes, just take some of that Vaseline on your finger. If sometimes zippers leak, rub some Vaseline on it. Plus, it 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 helps the longevity of the zipper too. And just one time, that's all you need to do. And each time you zip it, it just goes back in there. So it's pretty cool. I got cobwebs all over me from somewhere. Smoke or steam? Might be a smoke from that fire. So, anyway, it seems to be doing all right now. Got a pop can laying over there. I need to move because I hear water dripping on it. I hate that sound. So, all right, I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. What time is it? It is, let me show you what time it is. 940? 9.48.
holding steady at 63 degrees. That's from when I went around front. <laughs> so, all right. I got a comment on one of my videos. I'll check that out shortly. And, um, yeah, so I'll let you know what happens. Hang tight. And, of course, you know, I'll say goodnight before I go to sleep, but that's probably going to be a while, but I don't, there's no water coming on me now, so I think I got it fixed. All right, my glasses are fogging up. That could be an issue. All right, I'll be back with you guys. Hang tight. Good morning, guys. Man, I overslept big time. It is 9... 54 um i've been up for a little bit i just laying here listening to the birds get down to 53 last night man i was warm this this uh this sleeping bag did did well it did very well uh let me see what else that an exciting hand so i didn't turn you back on I just watched some YouTube till 5, and I shut that off at 5 o'clock, and then, uh, then I laid here for a little bit. I know it's been, been a good morning. It's supposed to rain all day today. It's supposed to storm today, but it, it, um, it hasn't rained yet. Let's see, yeah, it's 58 right now. Now it's not calling for any. It's scattered, uh, scattered thunderstorms tomorrow, but today 80 80 percent chance of pre precipitation. So, let's uh, get up about 72. So, but it was a really good night. Had a great night. I'm going to go in, see what Monkey's doing, and, uh, and then I'll roll up my bedding and stuff. And but Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, everything did well last night. The light. The light did well. well. Again, that's not broke. That comes off, so so you can hang it and stuff. That's, that's pretty cool. I did not know it did that when I did the review. But again, I'm going to the house. So what monkey's doing? Edit this video and get it up for you guys. And we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks again. Appreciate it. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Bye bye guys and take care.